Okay, let's start. I cannot hear myself, but I can. Uh, I can get it. So, welcome to um, welcome to a Blue Bio Value um, uh, workshop. So, we'll be focused on uh, challenges and opportunity for startups Thank you. in the blue economy, and we will focus on what Blue Bio Value helped. So with us, we have seven amazing startups that did the program and are looking to Portugal. And we also have the word of the two foundations that are supporting this program. So uh, uh, Blue Ocean Foundation and Calus Bulbacan Foundation. And we'll also look into a video that will show us what the program is all about. So to start, I'll ask Flippa Saldanha from Calus Bulbacan Foundation just to give us a short uh, note on what, why the foundation is supporting this and, and why are we here. So. Good afternoon, everyone, and th thank you for joining us today. Uh, as some of you already know, the, the Blue Bio Value is an initiative promoted by the Ocean Azul Foundation and the Carlos Gulbenkian Foundation. Um, we start this impactful collaboration in 2018, uh, mainly because we share a common vision regarding sustainable development. Uh, among many others, we believe that the Blue Bio Economy and this community in particular um, can help us decarbonize our society society, reduce resource scarcity, while at the same time adding high economic value and creating jobs. So during the last four years, we together with Ocean Azul Foundation have helped almost 50 startups from 19 countries uh, to grow in the market and to raise public and private capital. Uh, the path taken so far was really helpful to attract the investor community and also to attract dozens of labs and research, research centers in this area. Uh, all of this is done with collaboration with two excellent partners, um, the Blue Bio Alliance, of course, who has the scientific know-how, and of course, Maze Impact, who has all the business know-how. Uh, we are proud of what we have achieved so far, uh, but we are humble and very much committed to go further, so this, this event will help us uh, identify more challenges and opportunities in the Blue Biotech markets, uh, which also enable us to grow our ambitions in the future. Uh, so a special thanks for the, to the Blue Bio Alliance for organizing this event, and of course, to all the BBV Blue Bio Valley startups. Thank you very much and enjoy. Thank you, Flipper. So let's uh, look at a very short video. So what's the program about? Is your startup impacting the blue economy of the future? The Blue Bio Value Accelerator program is for you. The Blue Bio Value is helping us understanding what the future can look like, the passion to do business in a different way. We are looking for innovative solutions in the food and feed supply, human health and well-being, industrial technologies, environmental health. Ocean-based technology can represent a huge opportunity. We can find solutions that enable us to consume fewer of the planet's natural resources. A place to learn and grow. It was a big learning for us. In the Blue Bio Value Accelerator, you have the opportunity to scale your business and take part in the only Blue Biotech Accelerator in the world. We believe in ideas as powerful as the ocean. Okay, so as I said, so we have seven st startups with us that are doing their business, are rocking the world and saving the oceans at the same time. Uh, and we will focus on why Portugal, what are the bottlenecks, what the struggles do they have, and how BBV helped solving those problems. So what I'll ask to you shortly in one minute time, and you have the time there, is to present yourselves, try to present your startup as bad as you can, so we can all know you and start the discussion. So, Refix. Thank you. I am Raul, the founder of Refix, and we produce a natural and organic recovery drink made with 20% of seawater. Why? <clears throat> because seawater has the same mineral salts that, your, that the, the, the blood, that the body plasma, but in a huge concentration. So if you mix uh, fresh water with seawater at 20%, you can have 
the exactly copy of your body plasma, so it's the perfect isotonic drink. And then we add <coughs> a, lit, a little bit of lemon juice, so it tastes uh, really good and it's uh, sugar free and organic, and that's that's what we do. It's uh, one minute yet, no. And we extract the seawater in a natural protected area with the best seawater quality in all the Europe coastline. It's okay, no? Hi, my name is uh, Tia Cristovo. I'm the CEO of Undersea. Uh, we provide sea forecasts for aquaculture companies. Uh, our objective is to bring more predictability to a quite risky business. Um, we started in 2016 and we are currently expanding our operations to Norway. Hello, good morning. Uh, my name is Ron Rito, one of the founders of Cientia. Cientia is a new aquaculture startup from Portugal. Uh, what we do is we want to uh, improve sustainability in seafood production, specifically in our case, Curvina. So we are implementing a recirculation aquaculture system that allows us to improve the animal welfare without using any uh, antibiotics or other chemicals. So we will not contaminate the food, neither uh, the ocean water. Thank you. Hello, I'm James Lander, co-founder at AlgaeSys, um, and uh, we basically are focusing on uh, providing highly affordable circular solutions to deliver water, food and energy security uh, for many smaller communities uh, around the world. Uh, basically, we are recycling wastewater to produce high quality reusable water for industry, for aquaculture, for local communities in water stressed and coastal areas. We're also uh, net uh, energy positive. We produce more energy than we actually consume, uh, and we are a decarbonized solution. Hello, hello everyone. My name is Carlos, CEO and co-founder of Flexi. Uh, we are based in London, and we are a company developing a biomaterial to replace single-use flexible plastic packaging. Uh, we started about two years ago and we're currently working in uh, our laboratories with our prototypes and improving on those to actually be able to make this a reality and make plastic a thing of the past. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Anne Ruddy from Red Rose Development based in Ireland. I joined uh, the Blue Value Bio two years ago and we're all about seaweed, macroalgae, from cultivation making it accessible to fishing communities to processing it to increasing the value although this does look like a urine sample it's actually seaweed it is the very definition of the seaweeding we take all the value from breaking up the cellular structure creating a value chain which benefits local communities fishing communities and supplies food feed fertilizer and so much more so macroalgae the way to go so thank you to you all. As you could see, we have startups with different levels of maturities. Some refix you are selling already. Some are still on development phase. Others are, are growing their technology. So let's try to find common troubleshooting or common uh, bottlenecks in, um, in the process. So the first question to you all is what would be the bottleneck you identify as the hardest, as the hardest one when you started? And I'll start for you, Anne. Yes, for me it's all about trying to convey my vision as to what is needed and get the support, be it financial in terms of resources and uh, certainly in working with Blue Bio Value, it helped me to identify and articulate what I needed. But for me the bottleneck is at the moment very much financial and funding. So money, right? So is that the same for you? Well, definitely. I think money is, a, is an issue for everyone. If you want to start something and try and build it, it's obviously expensive. Uh, in our specific case, uh, research is pretty much uh, capex, exp capex expensive. So especially when it comes to convincing investors which are used to working with software, uh, a lot of the investors and VCs come from the fintech background, especially trying to convince them that they need to invest into laboratory machinery uh, that eventually will devalue but will deliver a product in the future, hopefully, that's what we're there for. It's something hard to achieve. And for us specifically also, another uh, bottleneck has to do with legislation, uh, especially in biomaterials and plastic. What is a plastic, what is a biomaterial, and see how um, the actors doing this legislation can bring this forward and actually change it for the better in the future. 
I would like to just um, take the, uh, the issues further previously mentioned about funding. For example, there are plenty, there's plenty of money out there, uh, venture capital and so on. That seems to be coming and going, is it? Yeah. Is that better? Yes, that seems to be better. So, um, so there's plenty of money out there, lots of venture capital uh, organizations. And you hear this, oh, well, we have a 200 million fund for environmental projects. But so far, we've only been able to disseminate uh, six or seven million of that. Now, that's crazy. But why? Why? Is it just because they're ris highly risk adverse? It's actually because very often our customers, uh, certainly in our segment, which is water and wastewater, very often we're dealing with municipalities, government organizations, and they're very conservative and very risk adverse when it comes to new technologies and innovation and being the first to take the step. So the reason why these venture capital organizations often do not want to part with their money for certainly our segment is because they believe it will take us a long time to get to our first customer revenues. So basically, well, I'll, I'm also experienced a microphone problem, so it's just not here. So it's basically money, at the type of money, and the risking for the first prototype so far. Jean, what's your take? So basically, yeah, let's let's focus on money again. Uh, money is always going to be the problem for sure. But mo yeah, like James had just said, uh, there's a lot of money out there, definitely. Uh, but uh, it's not a lot of money to be uh, put on pre-seed development of, of uh, new agriculture startups. So uh, new startups, uh, especially in the blue economy. Blue economy is usually is associated with the fact that you need uh, quite uh, huge investments and long-term uh, investments as well. So you don't have the return of investment quite fast but people are not used to look at the, also the environmental and the social part associated to uh, to what comes with the development of these uh, startups so it's basically the focus not only for the investors not only on the outcome on the, on the return of investment but also the return on all the other things that are coming with the development of these of these companies so there should be much more money focused on the pre c development knowing already that a lot of them are not going to be going forward so most of the companies are going to fail but they need to fail for others to succeed uh, so i would say that and also let me just add the, the fact that uh, especially well i, I can talk for me uh, I'm coming. I'm a biologist. I'm coming from the from the scientific po point um, background, uh, so I'm, I was not used to, to deal with the businesses at all. So having uh, having the ability, uh, the possibility of learning with uh, acceleration programs and uh, and also the networking that these kind of events allows us to do is also very important because okay, people that have the money do not are going to put the money or want people that don't know how to manage the, the money. So it's also very, very, uh, very important to, to be aware of that. So basically, you're set on the ground to discuss BBV afterwards. So Tiago, what's your take? Uh, so I definitely agree with uh, the, the money issue. Uh, I think uh, the first bottleneck that we had, and I think BBV had, will help us is that uh, I come from a very technical side, I'm a mechanical engineer, uh, all of our team are, uh, we, d we did not have the financial background uh, and not the business background. So we definitely had the capability of executing, uh, but we didn't know, didn't know yet a lot about who, is, who would be our target market, who would be our final clients, how are we going to address them, uh, are we going to go through distributors or selling directly to them, all of these steps we did not, we thought we had in mind, but in fact we didn't. And so I think the acceleration program will help us with that, uh, and that um, indirectly help us uh, with funds, raising funds, because you cannot raise without explicitly saying how you are going to create revenue. Um, so I think BBV helped us on that. Uh, in 2018, we did not have our, our segmented market very well defined, and now, and after it, we, we had. So I think that, that would be our main bottleneck, uh, and that BBV really helped us out. And of course, the, the lack of money is a, is a problem for us because to introduce a product like this in, for example, in Spain, we need at least in one million euros only to introduce in the big supermarkets. But also, uh, a very innovative product uh, 
like that is uh, very complicated to, to convince to the to the buyer decisions no so you need to push them years and years and years so we have been working uh, five years since the beginning and you need to have uh, money to to, 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 su to to survive these, these years and also you need to have a lot of patience no so um, this is what what we need So, being money the first uh, bottleneck or, or the first you identified and having us in Portugal more and more dynamic on the startup on these areas and having us seeing that investors are attracted by uh, those dynamics. The question is, how do you see Portugal, how you position yourselves in Portugal? Do you interact with others uh, players in the, in the system? How is, the, how is your soft landing for those outside and for those in Portugal, how has it been the soft landing here in Portugal? And well, certainly the energy in Portugal and the enthusiasm at a uh, political level has been quite significant. Um, in Ireland, I have very much um, easy access to the politics, the legislation. It, it's a soft landing in Ireland, whereas it's not quite in place here for me anyway in Portugal. Uh, but the way I would see going forward, because I got so much from the accelerator, I would like to have a partnership in, in Portugal and to work and develop with collaborators in the area and to develop further. But certainly, there's certainly an energy here which uh, is lacking in some other places. Yes, just to build on this, uh, I totally agree. Uh, I think. Oh, I think it's a fact that Portugal has a very large coastline compared to its global surface area and has a huge maritime economic area. And I think it is a country that truly understands the potential of this uh, that not many other countries have, to be honest. So coming here and realizing that it is a country that is looking towards exploiting the potential of its oceans, of its coastline and of the blue bioeconomy uh, definitely helps. And of course there are uh, special funds as well which can be used in this country which you would not find in any other country because again they have the ocean and understand it. We've, we've actually found that uh, well, following our attendance on the uh, BBA a Blue BioValue course, um, we actually set up shop here, so we're registered in Portugal. And we've actually found that um, it, has, it has a very supportive ecosystem, uh, not just uh, through the BBA partners, but uh, beyond. And we have actually been outsourcing a lot of our fabrication uh, of our demonstrators and early, early uh, plants uh, to companies um, across uh, Portugal along with uh, a recruitment strategy that reflects that. Uh, ultimately because for us uh, in water, wastewater, uh, the Portuguese market per se is relatively small but we do see basically uh, as Portugal as an expert, excellent base for an export market across the world and that is our objective. So we are very grateful to Blue, the Blue Bio Value program for actually um, directing us to this, and it is one of the easier uh, countries in the EU to do business in our sector. So we really appreciate that. Um, well, I'm, I'm Portuguese, so I decided to set up my my company in Portugal. That that was clear to me. Well, you you and Tiago, you are Portuguese. So the question is, besides interacting with other Portuguese actors, the question is, how do you see investors looking into this new dynamic? So both of you raise money uh, here, both of you have installations and setup here. The question is, are you seeing a new dynamic coming here? Yes, I was going to evolve to that side, uh, definitely yes. Uh, especially in the last five to six years, I think, uh, well, a lot of events have been happening in Portugal. So, well, look look around, we have the United Nations Ocean Conference in Portugal, the second one happening uh, since ever. Um, and and uh, yes, what, what I feel is that, uh, like you just said, people are looking more, ex ex especially we are attracting investment from uh, other countries, not only from Portugal, but also the, that uh, that attractiveness from investment from from other countries also raised awareness from the investors investors inside the inside inside the country as well. 
to start raising some funds specifically uh, directed to the blue economy. And that happens with some of the funds that we know. Um, uh, blue Fund, also the government, has is, is been looking around uh, uh, for to try to, to set up these these uh, these funds available for the for these new startups to be um, to be implemented in Portugal, which is I think it's obviously a good opportunity. Yeah, definitely. We uh, we we raised money uh, in in Norway, uh, and we are currently raising another another uh, round at the moment. Uh, and I think that Portugal in, in the last years made a made a huge uh, difference um, regarding what what we saw back then, which was more more li like you said before, coming from fintech or coming from software based VCs. Uh, I think they are more open to this kind of um, this kind of industry. Um, and still, I think uh, as the Blue Fund is now opening, I think Portugal is taking the right steps uh, on the right direction. Yeah. Uh, if I compare Portugal with, with Spain, uh, we have found more interest in Portugal than in Spain in all kind of uh, business, in the supermarkets, um, all kind of segments. Um, also, we found investors in Portugal, not in Spain. Uh, most of the investors are living in, in Portugal, that's true. And for example, uh, we want to test our product uh, for the hangover because uh, the mitochondria works faster when uh, you drink seawater because seawater has a lot of mineral salts. So uh, we can decrease the percentage of alcohol if you are drunk. And we didn't find any university in Spain that wanted to work with this study because they say that work with alcohol is not good for the communication or whatever, a lot of problems. And in, in, in Portugal we found it at the first time. <laughs> So what I take from the, these two points is that we have a lot of investors in Portugal, there are a lot of investors coming into Portugal, but still the main problem is still money. So it is a question of technologies not being ready, it is a question of investors not, in, not uh, taking the risk. Uh, what you take on that? Very shortly, uh, because you are, you are rushing on time. And I, I will ask you also to add up how BBV helped on that de-risking facing the investors. Okay, and shortly because we are running out of time. Right, very quickly. I think a lot of it is a language barrier. I'm not talking about inter-country language barrier, but I'm talking about the investors speak a different language to that of the innovators, who speak a different language to that of the scientists. So we need to have an interpretation, and this is where BV, BBV helped because they they provided that translation for the different sectors. Um, there's definitely an issue of uh, not getting enough money at the very early stage when the technology is not ready and investors looking for more validation. But then again, it's a vicious circle because you will never have a ready technology without the money input. And I think BBV really helps you because it puts you in contact with a lot of actors and a lot of research centers such as CIMAR uh, who can actually help you to get along the very initial transition to a very V1 of your technology where you can demonstrate more to the investors and get that extra push to actually managed to get some funding. Yeah, I think um, uh, Blue BioValue uh, basically turned, encouraged us to get out of our shells and look at it from the outside perspective. So change our techno babble, as it were, into a, a narrative that was accessible to investors and to other stakeholders, many of whom are not in the industry and aren't even necessarily the direct beneficiary or the direct buyer of our technology but the immediate beneficiary and so really having a group of people who are um, in, in, in sufficiently close but further away in order to validate your narrative your approach your models and so on was very so important before going into if you like the uh, in front of the real investors so it was, it was very valuable sort of peer review um, Blue Bio Value, well, uh, played a very big role, very crucial role in the fact, in, in what I just told before, which is uh, learning what is real business. And that's exactly what Anjad said. Well, 
we, are, we're, we were not talking the same language as investors were. So we had to learn what are they talking about. They had to learn what are we talking about. We had to commit ourselves to, to match these, these two languages. And, and Blue Buyer Value helped us uh, uh, well learn the new, this new world out there, which is, okay, let's talk about money, but how to apply it? How can we actually make good use of that? Uh, especially in our case for 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 the ocean for the good for the good of the oceans and the environment and that's uh, what i actually found back in 2018 when the first, when the first edition happened uh, well i i got to know that i did i did nothing about business before that uh, and also not only that but also the networking the amount of companies that you know around you that are doing the same things that you want to do uh, so uh, partnering with everyone around, not only companies, the startups, the investors, the entities, the, the also the governmental uh, uh, entities are really, really a plus on, on this. And if, if you do not do that, you are not going to go anywhere, for sure. I, I think the startup scene um, in, the, in the blue environment uh, will definitely uh, gain a lot when we have the first um, uh, the first startups that were born five, ten years ago start to exiting, and then investors start seeing, okay, there is real results here, uh, because I think we, it's still quite young, uh, and so from the investor's standpoint, it looks quite risky because you don't have a lot of track records, you don't see a lot of companies that have done similar things, exiting or uh, raising capital, and so it's a common question. Uh, we, we should find similar companies so that we can understand how much value. Are, are, we, are we looking for here and it's sometimes it's very difficult or it's non-existent uh, and here I think it, it I think the industry will, will leverage a lot in Portugal when we start seeing companies exiting uh, both in Portugal or in Europe or in the United States doing similar things I, I think we, we are just in that middle step where a lot of people are already raised but still not a lot of exit so we are just not yet there but but we are we are going there definitely and for us, basically, it was a before and after because uh, we learned a lot of concepts wha that we didn't we didn't know about them, and it's very it was very useful to speak with the with investors and also to to prepare the the pitch. Of course, we uh, we, we didn't know about uh, economics and business, so we needed a a company to prepare the the business plan, but the the presentation was. Uh, uh, after the Bluebio value was uh, definitely useful to, to get that investment, the presentation we, we made with, with you. So one of the things that uh, you have also mentioned besides the money is the tech resources you can find in Portugal, the ability for you to produce or to research or to commercialize uh, uh, your product. So how do you see, besides investment, the Portuguese landscape involving? Well, certainly from my point of view, it was about research. And unfortunately, my cohort was on Zoom due to COVID. Um, and I felt that it actually held me back a couple of years. I've only now got my samples this year. Now I'm confident looking at the landscape in Portugal, I could have had this two years ago had I been able to travel, had I been able to work with the research labs. But it does go to prove that Portugal has it and they're way ahead of the game. Well, in our specific case, all I can say is that we were part of the Blue Bill Value program in November and we're now in June and uh, we are still talking, for example, of the University of Aveiro, which we met through the program uh, for some of our research and development processes. So I think that there definitely is the opportunity through Bio, Blue Bill Value and within Portugal to actually find those research, research centers. I mentioned the CIMAR earlier, uh, also more commercial entities, for example, A4F, with, we, with which we've been in contact after the program. Uh, we really are exposed to many, many different players, both academic and commercial, uh, which you can leverage down the line to actually get value and help you to develop your product. Yeah, and I would, uh, I would certainly re um, reflect what Carlo has said, you know, and in a sense, Portugal does punch well above its weight in terms of the capabilities. And I think, as, as you were talking about uh, earlier, the fact is that with time, through this program, there will become a, a critical mass of uh, startups 
at various phases of the supply chains and delivery channels around us will actually create the momentum so that the sector is taken better notice of. It is seen to be more established and, and therefore the money will come in. So I think uh, it, this all links together. But likewise, we've had excellent uh, links through uh, Blue BioValue to University of Adira and others, uh, which has been very be very important to us going forward. Yes, what you mentioned is really uh, is another very interesting point about Portugal, which is, I think you're really, really good top level, uh, world top level, uh, on doing research in the blue economy. But then, translating that into the, the real economy is not that easy. Uh, and now, with the, with the, with the implementation of the Blue Bio Value program, uh, which I totally um, support, uh, actually, you, may, you can make use of some startups, the winners, and not only because you can then be part of, the, of, a, of a, major then, uh, a major network that where you can actually put the companies, the startups that are being developed in contact with the facilities that have the technology available to do that research and then do the pilot project, whatever you need to do the research to actually uh, find some, some things that you really need to upscale your project, your, your, your business. And this is really important because up until now, what I was looking to, actually to me, was like the research is absolutely amazing, really nice, very good papers published, but then translating that into the economy, not that much. But now if you look in what the program is trying to do is actually putting the companies in contact with the research facilities. And this is really important because actually people get to know what is it, what is it available for us to use. And well, the Blue Demo Network from the Blue Bio Alliance is also, well, playing a major role on, the, on, this, on, on this matter. Yeah, I, I agree with what you said. Definitely, uh, Blue Bio Value gave us um, contacts um, in the academia that can, uh, that can that have helped us uh, during the development process. Uh, I think Portugal has a lot of um, technical expertise uh, in, this ag in, in, in this industry. Uh, still, I think the, the main bottleneck is that a as a private end of your, our, our timelines are much shorter than uh, from a um, um, uh, develop, um, uh, research. research standpoint. Um, so in research, usually you have much more time uh, and you don't have to be so much hurry to get the deliverables. Uh, I think as a startup, we have much shorter time and we need to move fast. Um, and sometimes this collides um, when you are trying to work with uh, the academia. Uh, not because, um, it's simply because both of them have different objectives. And so I think Portugal definitely uh, has the technical expertise, but have to find a way how to better manage these um, uh, work together. Yeah. And I think the, the landscape of Portugal is very promising since uh, with our five years of experience uh, we have found more professionality in the suppliers, in the factories, um, even in they are more open-minded than uh, the, the, in Spain because of what I said. No, uh, We didn't find any university that wanted to work with us because of the alcohol thing, but we found it in Portugal. And also, what we uh, what we saw is that um, the Portuguese entities, the public Portuguese entities, uh, understand the necessity of work fast, no, uh, for us because we don't have the time uh, to wait one year for a study. So this is what we. Do. Okay, just explain a little bit what Juan said. Juan talked about Blue Demo Network. And Blue Demo Network is one shop place that all companies can have for moving their technologies ahead. So we will create what your, des your, your desires in terms of development and put you in connection with the best research institutes in Portugal to do so. That's Blue Demo Network. And it's what one of the missions of, of Blue, B B Blue, sorry, Blue Bio Alliance. So in the five minutes you ha I have um, to, to ask you to, to some questions, my last one would be uh, a very obvious one. So would you recommend, will, will you recommend Blue Bio Value to other startups now that uh, uh, a new cohort will, will start uh, this year? Most definitely. Anybody with innovation in the ocean space? 
uh, definitely step forward because this is the program and as was said earlier, as we see them coming through this five-year program and we look at positive exits, this is where the attention is going to be. Definitely, uh, if you're in the blue tech space, if you work with uh, some sort of ocean resource or ocean uh, technology, uh, and remember, you don't have to be based in Portugal to find value in Portugal and in the program. Uh, we are based in London, we are working with some Portuguese entities, but we have no official branch in Portugal, and I think that's something that we didn't quite mention in our panel, but really, it is open to everyone and it is a great opportunity, great people who organize it, and it really is a really well-structured program that I recommend to anyone. Yes, we would definitely recommend it as well. I mean, there are lots of accelerator programs out there, but I think the Blue Bio Value one is unique for the blue economy. And so we had people coming all the way from Australia and India, as well as you know the rest of Europe and so on. Um, the other thing which hasn't been mentioned is part of our potential value chain was actually found in amongst our fellow participants, and we are already starting to collaborate with some of them from Italy and from Spain uh, in things like uh, grants and, and, and other potential, uh, in our case, uh, contributing to the, the circular economy uh, value chain. So, bravo. Well, it's, it's a bit biased from my side, <laughs> but okay, for sure. I would definitely recommend Blue Bio Value for sure. Well, I've been collaborating with it since uh, the first edition. I've been a mentor on the program. Uh, so if you want a shortcut for the su success, well, uh, go ahead and uh, try to, try to uh, apply for it. Uh, it, was, it was the program that gave us the most systematic way to align our business development. Uh, they had like a kit uh, where you have like the canvas and all of that uh, stuff and it was the, mo the best and I've done another acceleration program in other countries and I can say this one is like the best and I never saw a better one. Yeah, me too. We have participated in other accelerator programs and one year duration and we learn in two months more than in one year duration in other programs. So, uh, we are closing on our time. So, if you want to want to know more about these startups, they will be around uh, the entire conference. Most of them are in the Blue Bio Alliance uh, uh, booths. We, if you want to know more about Blue Bio Alliance and what we do and how we connect the dots between research, startups and corporates, pass by our booth, Elizabeth, which is back there. We'll follow on on every questions you have. And, uh, you know, apply. If you have any doubts, apply to Blue Bio Value. Pass the word. That's the best uh, we can ask from you. And to finish, I will ask Anna from uh, Blue Ocean Foundation, as Philippe did, to fill, in, fill us in on the role of this foundation in supporting Blue Bio Value. Thank you all. Thank you, Anna. We'll finish after Anna. Thank you very much, Gonzalo. Hello to all. Um, welcome here to, to this session. And uh, I would like to start by thanking Blue Bio Alliance for organizing as the scientific partner of Blue Bio Value this session uh, and also pitching what is, the, I think, the best ambassadors of the program that we've been, that we launched together with Carlos Kulbenkian Foundation uh, back in 2018. So our six startups, I think your solutions and also the openness that you've shown in, in, uh, in uh, regarding the challenges that you're facing, but also the opportunities that you found here in Portugal. I think they are the best ambassadors of the program and so thank you very much for openly sharing them. And also, of course, thank you for the organization, One uh, Sustainable Ocean, uh, for putting together this, this uh, amazing group of opportunities for in the context of the blue economy. Uh, I, on behalf of the Anuslu Foundation, I would like also to mention that we are ahead now of the fifth edition of our acceleration program and so uh, very soon you'll be learning about the new uh, startups that will be joining the program for this year. And in general, we, we believe that uh, the five years in which we've been uh, showcasing this program, we have demonstrated three very important issues. First of all, which is uh, uh, how different and, and how large it is the spectrum of all of these solutions in terms of what the ocean can offer. Uh, we've seen from new inks to new biomaterials, to new foods, to new algae applications, uh, to new aquaculture solutions. The spectrum of, of the applications of marine biotechnology are 
are uh, a, a huge potential and of course clearly demonstrate uh, what the ocean can what ocean can offer and what also the ocean can offer in terms of the solutions that uh, the society so much needs from tackling pollution uh, to tackling of course marine plastics uh, to encountering new solutions to a growing population from food and new feed to of course also finding new solutions regarding new pharmaceuticals new cosmetics etc uh, it the list is is is, is always vast and uh, we the two foundations uh, uh, together in the program truly believe that we've been showcasing the potential that the ocean has uh, in tackling some of these uh, important uh, uh, missions that our that our society faces regarding the ocean and how important it is the ocean that we so much care about that we continue uh, embedding it in our economy in a sustainable way uh, and of course taking care of the ocean that so much needs us thank you very much Thank you.